Hey everybody, Matt Barton here with this week's Broker Minute or Two, and I hope the day after uh, the elections we're all taking a collective uh, uh, breath and realizing we don't have to watch hundreds of political commercials anymore. That's the good news of the day. Hey, so um, I get uh, feedback from the office managers on a pretty regular basis, and um, one of the office managers had a list of things. I'm going to use it as the basis for my quick Broker Minute or Two today. Listing input forms. Um, I've covered this in the past. Going to quickly retouch on this. Um, it says uh, the listing input form is required in all cases, or can they use an addendum to exclude? So it's a good question. Uh, yeah, we can addend things, but the company's position is not to exclude the data input form. And I get this in a lot of different contexts. Sometimes it's builders. Um, the reason for it is simply this. If we don't have a data input form that specifies square footage and acreage and features of the home, what's included and what's not excluded, in the course of us marketing the property, we're going to have to come up with that information. And barring a paper trail, you know, that shows that the seller originated that information, then we become the originator of the data. And we've had two lawsuits over the past couple of years specifically tied to this. And so it is a big deal. The company policy will always be to have a listing input form. Listen, if you represent a builder and they build three different models, then get a listing input for the three different models and, you know, essentially rubber stamp that and include it or include a copy of the um, MLS printout with the property information signed off by the seller saying, yes, I approve this information, but we need to have a paper trail. Second one, acceptance, acceptance date and time deadline on documents required to be filled out. Yeah, so this is an important thing. Um, our, our fiduciary of reasonable care. So there are things in the contract. It's why we have a section called time is of the essence, right? The default in a contract is five o'clock mountain standard time. Important to pay attention to that one. Um, and so, yes, we need to have, I mean, if somebody's to a hand signature, they should write in the date and time that they're signing it. If you're using Skyslope, it's very easy. We've showed you in a previous video how to toggle on a signature. Don't just put the time, I mean, the date, uh, do the time, and it will put both the time and date, which gets important when it comes down to did we deliver um, correspondence by way of notice, like a cancellation on time as required by the contract. Third one is if an agent has an FHA VA addendum, our company policy, uh, if you read through that addendum, which I would always recommend, read through your documents at least once, uh, there's a hard requirement for the seller to provide a pest control report. Now, they don't have to agree to pay any money if there's anything found with the pest control report, but in the default of an FHA VA addendum is required that the seller provides a pest control report. And so don't be surprised if you're doing an FHA deal and you're representing the seller, if your office manager says, hey, where is your pest control report? Um, very important to, uh, to, to get ahead of so that you don't have a problem down the road. That's always what we're managing towards. We're never trying to make your life difficult. And in fact, we're trying to keep it from, uh, you know, becoming difficult by the things that we request. I hope those three uh, quick reminders are helpful to you. And I hope that uh, we can all, you know, get back to work uh, now that elections are decided and we can go forward. Uh, have a great week and we'll talk soon.